The Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria has described as baseless, frivolous, and false allegations that over $1 billion of the union's funds have been embezzled. Now, you'd recall that a group that goes by the name Nigerian Anti-Corruption Defenders Network had alleged an embezzlement of $1 billion between 2012 and 2022 when comrade Alade Bashir Lawal was the Secretary General of the Association. Now, however, sources said a disgruntled former official of the ASCSN is behind the fabrication of the allegations in an effort to unsettle the association. Now, in a statement, the ASCSN Secretary General Comrade Joshua Pebo enjoined its teaming members throughout the country and the general public to discontinue uh, such unfounded wild allegations. According to the statement, and I quote, how much did the union generators check off dues between 2012 and 2022 when Comrade Alade Bashir Lawal was the secretary general that he embezzled $1 billion. So they have even saying the amounts that was even generated by the association between this time during the year in view is not even up to the $1 billion that um, the group has claimed that was siphoned. So what are your thoughts on this one? Well, uh, he who alleged has to prove. And uh, I want to think that the people who are alleging are not members of that group. No, they're not. And the members of the group have come up to say this is the fact. So if what they are saying is not correct, the group who is saying that uh, there is fraud allegation, they know what to do. You can approach the courts so that you can prove your allegation. So I want to commend the union that have uh, come up to respond, to say that this is not true, to correct the records and make it uh, right. So I also want to appeal to the group that have alleged anti-corruption uh, group is a good thing that you are trying to do to ensure that our system is rid of corruption if you have facts and evidence i will encourage you to approach the courts so that you can get this corruption out of that system but if you are being sponsored if you don't have enough information i would like you to kill the matter at the level it has reached so that we don't need much uh, a crisis in different levels now, especially at the civil service uh, system, because at the engine rooms of government, we need a concentrated system right now so that our economy can get out of this bad mess situation. Talking about getting out of a mess, there have been allegations and talks about uh, corruption in the civil service now. This is a very broad topic that can be discussed for hours. But within the short time, I want you to tell us what your recommendations would be um, towards those talks and allegations. It's not the first time we're hearing talks about corruption in the civil service. So let's get your thoughts on how you think we can come out of it. Well, I know that we have the anti-graft uh, agencies. We have the ICPC, we have the EFCC, we have Savicom, we have due processes in our civil service. Yet, we still hear about now, corruption. mine is that if you have evidences of corruption, not assumption or assumptive uh, information, you know what to do. You can approach the courts. You can approach the relevant agencies to investigate the corrupt practices that you have seen with evidence. You know, so mine is that... Now, we're not just talking about this particular group that is pointing fingers at the civil service. I'm not even referring to... We this are group. looking at the civil service holistically. As Nigerians who have been Nigerian, who have been in the media, to know what has been happening. The other day we heard, was it in Biosa State? In the, I think Biosa State, the particular state now, since I'm not so sure, where the government actually started sacking a whole lot of civil servants because they were they found out that some of them are not even in the country, some of them have reached retirement, some of them are no longer alive. Some of them are just names that were in, included in the list, and they have all these people I just mentioned have been collecting salaries. So the state government had to do some investigations and found out and had to let 
you know, clear the system. Now, when we're talking about corruption in the civil service, these are some of the things we're mentioning. So back to the question now. In coming out of this and sorting out these issues, these are just a few I've mentioned amongst many others that we've heard about corruption. So what do you think can be done differently this time? It's because there is always political, uh, religious, ethnic, social interferences in our processes. That's why even the remote causes of this kind of nefarious act in terms of employment cannot really be uh, pursued or prosecuted. Because you are a civil servant, in terms of uh, recruitment, or, uh, you know, recruitment, uh, somebody somewhere who, in quotes, is a big uh, stakeholder, gives you a name for you to include in that list, you dare not say no, because it might cost you your job. So our appeal is not even on the officers. Our appeal is on the allies, the stakeholders, those who interfere in the processes of recruitment. So our appeal is that let us not continue to, you know, interrupt the processes of recruitment. Because those who are the recruitment officers, most times, like my brother will say, their hands are tight. Because they are coming from people that you dare not say no to. And secondly, Let's be moral for once. If you know that you are tired of working for the government, you can put up your resignation. You can apply for a retirement. It's, it's, it's the, the Civil Service Act provides all of this. So if you know that you are no longer interested in working for the state government, the Nigerian government, you preferred overseas where you have gotten a greener pasture and a better life, you have joined the Jackpa committee, you should honorably resign All from right. your you uh, know, appointment. While you were giving your analysis and you know, asking as first when you started, I then remembered one of the stories we took, and you were actually my guest on this show, Ambassador, yeah. <laughs> when we talked about the recruitment process in the mm -hmm. civil service and the MBS saying that uh, about 40% or so were not ready. But let's go to the next story now.